What is up, Bitcoiners? It's your boy CK, and I want to introduce this week's episode of the Bitcoin Magazine podcast. At Bitcoin 2021, I sat down with Chase Perkins, the CEO of Impervious.ai. Impervious is an amazing layer built on top of Lightning that allows people to, in a cryptographically and privately insured way, um, effectively build out apps. It is an API that the first application is a VPN, but it will be able to power the entire internet's worth of applications. And it all is built on top of Bitcoin and Lightning. When Bitcoin, when Bitcoiners say that Bitcoin is the new internet, the internet of value, and that the internet is built in the layered approach, this is what we are seeing being developed here. Bitcoin, Lightning, and now these layer threes, these application layers like Impervious. This is a really interesting episode. I just want to apologize. That there was a lot of background ambient noise going on during the interview. There was a lot of music being played right next door to us. So apologies about the noise, but I think you guys are really going to enjoy this episode with Chase Perkins. Let's get right into it. All right, let's take a quick break from that episode. I want to tell you guys about our sponsor. It is Bitcoin 2022 conference. I am sure you saw the videos. You may have been there in person. Bitcoin 2021 was an absolute smashing success. It was the biggest conference in Bitcoin history, crypto history, whatever history of the digital asset sphere. Bitcoin is number one and the Bitcoin 2021 conference is number one with a bullet. It was an absolutely incredible time. I was working my ass off the whole time, but I got to meet so many incredible community members. And I think the best testament to how amazing Bitcoin 2021 was, was not just all of the amazing, you know, accolades and, uh, and compliments that I got personally and our team got, but also it's the skin in the game in Bitcoin 2022. We have already sold close to 1500 tickets. That is more than 10% of the people, everyone who went to Bitcoin 2021 have already purchased tickets to Bitcoin 2022. We have not released a date. We have not released a city. We have not released anything. That is the biggest compliment. That is the biggest skin in the game of the community being down for this conference. Bitcoin 2022 is going to be bigger than Bitcoin 2021. It's going to be better than Bitcoin 21 in every single way. And we are going to be bringing you the best opportunity to mingle with the biggest, the baddest, the most Bitcoin people on the planet. So join the revolution. Go to b.tc forward slash conference. Get your tickets today. I don't know what the ticket prices are. They are going up. I think they're $249 right now. We just rolled out fiat ticket uh, purchases. All the tickets purchased before today were all purchased in BTC. So get it, guys. Get it. Get this ticket. Be at Bitcoin 2022. See you there. Bitcoiners, I am sitting here across the table from Chase Perkins of Impervious AI. This is my first interview I've done at Bitcoin 2021. Uh, and uh, after about seven hours at the at the store, so I'm a little sweaty, but Chase is very with us. Uh, I'm into it. And, hey, this event is crazy, am I right? Like, this is, what is it's this? nuts. You're, you're faring well. So, dude, thanks for having me. I'm stoked to chat. Awesome. So I guess, Chase, let's uh, start off with what's your rabbit hole story? How do you get into Bitcoin? And then we can dive into what you're building at in purpose. Sure. I mean, long story short, uh, relatively early Bitcoin miner, 2011, 2012, and we saw the value um, that Bitcoin can offer. And as Bitcoin and now Lightning has progressed, we have uh, at Impervious, we're building a programmatic layer to enable censorship resistant tech stacks. Uh, and impervious AI lets anyone develop on uh, on Bitcoin or Lightning without knowing anything about Bitcoin or Lightning. So happy to go from there. Yeah. Wait, so let's dive a little bit into like you started mining Bitcoin. Was it 2011? Yeah, 2011, uh, 2012. Yeah. So like, how did you discover it? What was that? Yeah, like? I, let's I mean, get into I, it. I, yeah, I think it was like a Wired article. They're like, "LOL, internet money" or whatever. And so I set up at first. It was like server racks of CPUs okay. and then GPUs and then ASICs came online when individuals could still um, and we just basically flipped that um, for uh, to help fund a, a different startup through R&D before we raised so 
um, you know, it's one of those things they say, had we done nothing but just held on to it, I could call you from the space shuttle, but, you know, there's always next time. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, so many people have that story, but honestly, that, that's why Bitcoin is money. That's why Bitcoin is money, right? Because it had this time where there was confusion, where the narrative was kind of like Absolutely. not perfect, and that allowed the coins to be distributed in probably the most fair way possible. Yeah, and you know, and, and I was in law school at the time, and I was attracted to like the censorship resistant component, and that started with like step one is the financial aspect, right? Like um, a party can't seize your keys, whether they're you know malintent or whether it's meritorious, you can't wake up to surprise unless you share those keys with a third party, um, which is really material for like a liquid uh, asset, equivalent almost like a bare instrument, a bare digital gold. Um, and so, like, you know, we instantly, or I instantly saw the value in that, um, especially as the, we were coming out of financial crisis, we had degraded trust in third parties, but also, like, you can get a subpoena, and you can have, you know, uh, you can have a policy description, you have a terms of service violation, there's so many reasons a third party intermediary would want to censor and control you, and this is like, Bitcoin was like the mega you know, first step into this is applied cryptography and we can use this for sound money, we can use it for sound uh, communication and like we're all to the races. That's amazing. I mean like the way you just broke that down just shows like an incredible level of like just understanding across multiple uh, disciplines, right? You said you were in law school. Yeah. What, what primed you to be able to see Bitcoin so early, even though maybe you didn't get the, the digital goals? Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, as much as you should have. It, it was definitely like, yeah, they, the autonomy component and like the cryptographic component where, uh, I don't know if it's like philosophical or like a political philosophy, but like individual sovereignty. Like, so if we go back to, we're going to take a step all the way back, right? So the Constitution itself uh, was inspired by the Federalist Papers, which, by the way, the Federalist Papers, our founding fathers exchanged public um, letters um, debating the nature of the future republic and what the Constitution would look like, and they did it pseudo-anonymously. And people forget this. So, they, so I actually just had a, a billionaire recently tell me, he goes, well, you know, we all know if you do something, only people that are doing something wrong have... The reason, a reason for privacy, the, the old, terrible, very dated argument. And I laugh because I was like, well, then I guess Benjamin Franklin and Madison and Jefferson and Hamilton and John Jay all had something to hide, right? So the reality is there's like a profound value. Um, and like, if we go back to like Federalist 10, Madison said, look, like, um, wise men will not always be at the helm. And here we are. I mean, we, we need a system, a digital infrastructure that reflects physical reality. Um, in a way that we uh, we consent and our current infrastructure our digital infrastructure the way I like to think of it is like our current digital infrastructure is written or designed like if you were to rent a car from Hertz and you're driving down the road and you're running late they should uh, send you a notice notifying you hey you need to return the car they text you and then they further escalate if you don't return the car they call they escalate they give you a late fee and eventually if you don't return the car they're like seriously we're going to call the authorities you need to return the car um, but the way our digital infrastructure is designed is that um, they just remote kill the vehicle in the middle of traffic like there's no recourse there's no ability to contest when a third party intermediary says like your time's up or we don't like what you're saying or doing or for any arbitrary reason, meritorious or other, they can just remote kill it. So, like, Bitcoin is that step to, like, creating systems. And the reason I brought Federalist Papers is, like, I think we're, at this time, at a point where we're the equivalent of writing the Federalist Papers for the future of the Internet, like, for the future of our digital reality. And, like, we have to get the infrastructure right all the way. That's, that's deep. I think this is a very good transition into what you're building now. Um, tell us about uh, Impervious AI. Uh, sure, man. Layer 3 on top of Lightning. Yeah, Layer 3 on top of Lightning. Um, we're really excited about it. I'll give another lofty quick pitch and then we'll go into it. But, like, so I think the best way to summarize it is that, like, when, when matters are of greatest import uh, and criticality, it's when it's most essential that you have that we have the ability to express dissent, communicate, participate in society without fear of uh, consequence or reprisal. And what we've seen, whether that's, I mean, this is particularly necessary with matters of war and peace, um, public safety, public health, we're seeing COVID, uh, 
financial security uh, and governance. And what we've seen is this degradation where exactly when we need those protections most is when we're most likely to have them uh, sell, uh, relinquished for us. Yeah. And so what, what Impervious is building is um, we're enabling censorship-resistant tech stacks like Layer 3, the programmatic layer built on Lightning. So Bitcoin's Layer 1, the settlement layer, Lightning Layer 2 allows for real-time uh, transactions, liquidity, but you can do so much more than just financial transactions. So we developed an API so everyone can develop and use as a, like a privacy by default censorship resistant technology. So everything from streaming video to podcast to communication to distributed storage, like use Lightning and like um, you can use our API and I can talk about our VPN. Um, and we, like, we know intermediaries are terrible custodians of our data. They can't be trusted. They're either incompetent or uh, they get hacked or they can be exploited or leveraged. And, you know, the way I see it is that, like, this, you know, this leverage we've seen over data control is, like, I mean, it's just information warfare. And it's no different than every all warfare that's ever been waged. It's compelling a party to do what you want by force. Like, Von Clausewitz was like, oh, politics, or war is politics by other means. Well, like, that's all this. Is. We can dress it up for policy change. It can be a national security issue. It can be a foreign government, whether it's uh, Modi's government censoring people that are critical of the COVID response or Iran or the CCP in China. You can dress it up however you'd like, but it's just a more efficient, far more pungent form of force, a digital force. And like, we have to get this right. Well, you have AI in your name, and that's like one of the scariest things about it. <laughs> Let's call it just general AI machine learning is like applying that to some sort of you know tech dissident yeah. or uh, sorry uh, dystopian tech future. Absolutely. Whereas like you know, there's a lot of gray areas in meat space where you actually can have some resemblance of privacy and autonomy without someone like always you know hovering over you but in cyberspace at least with the way things are run right now that's right and then layering on maybe some machine learning it like there's oh, a serious potential out there it's it's you know it's it, it's as bad as as you could imagine right like the, the reality is like as we shift into the convenience of the cloud like why would we want a server rack at home for an email server unless you're Hillary Clinton JK joking audience tar and feather later but like the reality is you know why why have a server when you can just spin up you know an instance when you can you know activate a droplet on digital ocean or whatever um, but what people don't realize is you lose that discretion and that control uh, and if and if we're going to get that back um, you know there, there's only like two plausible futures right one where intermediaries and gatekeepers when the Facebooks the Googles the ISP providers and governments have greater control and discretion over your life or business or one where they have less. So like we're voting for less. So like if, if people take nothing else away from our conversation, it's like, hey, we are enabling and simplifying building on Lightning and standardizing it regardless of like you can build any iPhone app, you can run any enterprise application uh, and we can help you establish secure, out of band, resilient censorship, you know, peer to peer resistant uh or peer-to-peer censorship-resistant uh, channels. So, like, you know, if, if you're hosting a podcast right now, people think peer-to-peer, they tend to think, like, one-to-one. And I think it's a rabbit hole. Like, oh, that's not scalable. Well, of course it is. And, like, we're using Lightning in, like, some very clever architecture. You can stream one-to-one or one-to-50, one-to-5,000, one-to-10,000. And so, yeah, I think we're right at the, at the precipice, and if necessary. And Lightning's done an amazing job getting us here. And we're just going to stand on the shoulders of giants and run wild. (laughs) Okay, so I want to talk into, like, let's just call it the new internet that you're attempting to build. Yeah, the new, new internet. (laughs) But before that, let's rewind a little bit and kind of just talk about Bitcoin and Lightning. And why is Bitcoin and Lightning, like, give us even this potential to kind of get out of this, you know, the whole dug ourselves in with, uh, you know, everything being in the cloud these days and Absolutely. trusting third party at the best default. Right. Well, the power, you know, distributed computes incredible. Um, and obviously there's been a lot of different approaches, proof of work being the most effective. Um, so what we've seen uh, regarding proof of work and what we've seen uh, for development um, 
on Bitcoin is that as we've embraced basically distributed uh, computation, um, it's become an increasingly not just reliable, but like robust system. And like the reality is we're no longer at a place where we have to rely on intermediaries. Like I think, I think the reality is it should be at your discretion to what extent you share or rely on a third party for convenience or other. Um, but with like we've just seen with sound transactions, sound money with Bitcoin or with lightning, the real time settlement layer, um, there's no intermediaries um, and there's no slowdown. So it's like, let's scale that up. I don't know if that answers your question. But. No, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Why, okay, so second follow-up question is, why is, is Lightning and Bitcoin the right way to do it? I would say yeah. a lot of people are trying to build the, the new internet. Web3 sure. is, a pretty, Web big, is a pretty big uh, yeah. buzzword out there. Like, what's wrong with, like, let's build the new internet on a totally. blockchain? Why so, does it have to be layered? Sure, yeah. so, like, let's start with, like, there have been a lot of parties that have tried, like Ethereum was originally pitched out, and I know they keep modifying their ethos and, and value prop and messaging, but it was like the global computer, right? Uh, and then there's Filecoin, and there, there's like a number of parties that have tried to push a lar- large amount of data through distributed networks. And like, obviously, if things get really expensive or clogged or slow or congested whenever there's demand, like that's not a feasible alternative. So it's like, it shouldn't be $1,000 for a transaction on Ethereum, not, I mean, it's not even any like actual computation. It's just like sending from one party to another a transaction. So, like, um, I think we're, and this isn't an impervious plug, but I think that like we can use that distributed compute. I do think Bitcoin's the way to do it. Um, and then like, and payment on the rails, like, okay, payment. Uh, being on the rails of like a lightning transaction like isn't like a feature or isn't like a, a nicety it's imperative it allows you to punch through any network any surveyed network any control network like it creates a worm tunnel or a wormhole or a secure cryptographic tunnel or channel it allows one party to communicate with the other with the satoshi backing back and forth, back and forth and once that channel collapses uh, especially if it's out of band there's no way to uh basically inspect it in retrospect it's ephem- uh, ephemeral so that was a long way of saying that I think Bitcoin is the, the infrastructure that allows like this cryptographic secure communication sediment layer it's trusted I mean what is blockchain it's a chain of blocks of data right like it's and this goes into you know the larger component which is like how do we tr- you know trusted data sources third parties like agreeing on the state of data or information so like we can use that as the fundamental base layer and then you can really start riffing for other communications channels Bitcoiners, I want to tell you guys about The Deep Dive. The Deep Dive is a new premium newsletter from the Bitcoin Magazine team in conjunction with my man BTCization Dylan McClaire. Dylan is such a multifaceted and wide-ranging analyst. He does everything from on-chain analytics to macro uh, analysis to uh, uh, you know hash rate and all that kind of good stuff. He does it all. He breaks down everything that's happening every single day with his daily dive. He's going to dive into what is happening in the market that day. So that way you don't have to pay attention to Twitter. You don't have to pay attention to anything else. You can just pay attention to the deep dive and he has you covered. And at the end of the week, guess what? You get a weekly recap. And at the end of the month, hey, we have a freaking report, a beautiful PDF breaking down all the activity of that entire month, what it means for Bitcoin, what you can expect moving forward. The Bitcoin market is going to moon We are here to make sure that we maximize your stack. Go to members.bitcoinmagazine.com to sign up today. And if you use promo code BITS, you can get one month for free. So again, the deep dive, I've been checking it out every day and you should too. Back to the show. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Well, I mean, I think that the way that you describe lightning is kind of like creates this P2P wormhole of data that it can be collapsed. Uh, it's really exciting, especially just like we're living in a world where, again, the modern internet is on someone else's computer, someone else's server. Um, let's call it the other attempts at Web3 right. <laughs> are data on a public blockchain. So, like, privacy, open, you know, source computing, like, that's they're things that kind of like don't necessarily fit in together per se. But it sounds like, you know, obviously, Lightning kind of brings all those things together and enables y'all to 
you know, built from there. So let's talk about Impervious. I feel like you teased a couple of different <laughs> use cases. Sure. You know, me personally, I've been really excited to see what Breeze and Sphinx are doing with oh. like streaming podcasts and then streaming payments back and forth, having chat groups and communities all on the Lightning Network. Yep. I think that's just you know a very small piece of what Impervious is trying to build. Um, can you just yeah. talk about absolutely? You know, and I'm happy to, uh, and I really like the Breeze guys, and I love Six Chat and Paul. We've been having some great conversations, uh, and and also I'm gonna also plug uh, Graham from Voltage. Um, Cloud. He's here. Yeah, yeah, Graham's amazing, and he's doing it the right way. And basically, I'll plug Graham before I even plug myself, which is like he's making it easy to spin up a node virtually for anyone to uh, you know uh, get on the Lightning Network. So it's just like a massive mesh network, right? And instead of having to run a physical node at home and it spins, it takes a week to download the blockchain, like you can spin up in 60 seconds. And ultimately, like that should be very under the hood and parties shouldn't have to know anything about Lightning or Bitcoin because the values and the value prop of, of Bitcoin is so self-evident that like if they can just get the benefits, it, they'll, it'll win, right? So uh, Graham's doing great stuff um, and Graham and uh, or Voltage and Breeze um, are doing some cool stuff together. And then Sphinx, yeah, so Sphinx, Sphinx Chat's awesome. And the way to think about Sphinx Chat is uh, they have a proprietary way to very cleverly cross-talk between nodes. And um, so you can think of trans-node, inter-node communication as like in-band. Um, and in Pervious, we built, so uh, Sphinx had to build the equivalent of their own API. They have to maintain it. Uh, for Sphinx to operate, so but they were you know they were first in the jungle, and Mark Brian Murray at Kraft was the one to tell me this. He's like, look, like they were, um, you know, they had a machete, they were clearing the jungle, and they had to figure everything out on their own. So like the way I'd see the future is like parties like Sphinx and parties like uh, Breeze could build on just the impervious API, and it should really take a lot of that heavy lift and pain out of it. And then they could just receive the benefits and have peer to peer whatever they want, and it can just be an aspect too. So, yeah, so we're building censorship-resistant tech stacks. We've got this API that lets anyone build. Um, and then we have also a dynamic meter VPN. And the dynamic meter VPN, uh, it allows parties to send and receive information from behind hostile networks, from denied access areas. And it, al- it shields the uh, party broadcasting, the sender and the receiver, and encrypts data at rest and in transit. So, basically... Uh, if you're in Iran, you're in a denied access area, you want to communicate, you can do so, and it can be completely shielded. And as long as you have a Satoshi, you can punch through. Um, and what we, one of the things we do with our API is, and again, the VPN is just an example, just like with Sphinx, what can be built on our API. It's software. It was an example. It's cool. We're going to actually offer it to the, to the world. Um, but you can build whatever you like on our API. And so what our API allows you to do is use... Uh, Lightning as a transport layer, uh, basically as a as a network config layer. So you and I, CK and Chase, can send uh, basically a message, encoded message to each other over Lightning, which is like encryption on encryption, and say, "Hey, let's have a. Uh, I'm going to have a podcast right now. I'm going to stream to you. So then we can open an out of band, resilient, uh, censorship resistant, cryptographically secure channel between us. And as long as we want to talk, as long as that one Satoshi in network is basically keeping the channel open. We can talk for free SSH, SSL, uh, FTP, just raw internet with no bandwidth requirements. So unlike Ethereum and unlike Filecoin or some parties that are trying, people become critical of Bitcoin. They're like, well, you'll never be able to compute on it. I'm like, it doesn't have to be the compute layer. It can be the settlement layer and the network config layer. So we use one Satoshi uh, and anyone can do that to then open up whether that's live streaming video, uh, podcast, news, streaming micropayments, censorship resistant uh, communication. It's just like the world's for oyster and ultimately like um, and we are also working with like conventional platforms and publishers that um, they may say stream to YouTube and Fireside Chat, Mark Cuban's company is one of them. They're incredible. Fallon, I'll give her a shout out. She's an amazing founder. Um, so like with, with Fireside, you, you can stream to YouTube, you can stream to you know uh, Instagram, just pick pick your poison. And an example of what Pervious can do for existing platforms is like 
other users could also toggle on to like, we'll just stream peer to peer. Do it. What's your impervious address? And it completely circumvents intermediaries. And like, as long as there's network config, um, they don't need Instagram. So I think we can fix Substack. I, mean, I love Substack. Um, I think we can do a lot of things because like it allows a party. It's like going private chat on OnlyFans, right? We're like ultimately here's our policy, and if you want to go peer to peer, you want to have private communications. Um, you can do that. And, and this is a really important point, which is like, sometimes people's initial reaction is like, well, what if it's abuse? <laughs> Very unamusing. And the reality is like, you're not abdicated of civil or criminal liability simply because something's encrypted. It's like crazy, right? Like, um, you know, I think if you think about impervious as like almost like an AT&T or creating an ecosystem that connects parties cryptographically securely, um, you know, at t we have federal common carrier laws that require, uh, if I call your, your phone, they have to connect one number to another. They don't have discretion. It's not if they don't like you or what you're saying or doing, or if you didn't pay your bill or whatever, you can't be censored. You can't hide behind terms of service. They have to connect this phone line to another phone line. Um, and, but that doesn't mean that like, if you use the telephone to commit a crime that like, you're not liable. So like everyone just needs to take a step back and realize that like, Due process existed prior to the digital age, and I'd like to get back to it. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a billion <laughs> examples about how due process has been completely circumvented by the authorities because of the digital age. That's whether right. it's buying marketing data, whether it's saying, like, oh, this is not private communication because it's with uh, a trusted third party, and hey, the list could go on. I'm kind of curious, I'm pretty dumb. So, uh, when you say like you're building an API to allow all these things, like what's the censorship resistance component of that? Like what happens to impervious if you know you're essential? Like if you are someone who can be coerced, like what does that? Yeah, do we the get, stack yeah, so, it? yeah, so yeah, so it's just open source, source open source code like Lightning, right? Like mm-hmm. what are you going to coerce? We'll help maintain, it. but the reality is it allows you to take advantage of Bitcoin. Like we don't control Bitcoin, we don't control Lightning, yeah. so like. As long as you guys can ha- use Lightning, you don't have to trust the cooling. It's trustless. Like, you don't have to trust Impervious because as long as you have access to the Lightning network or to Bitcoin, you can uh, create these censorship-resistant uh, communication channels or tunnels and you know use it at your discretion. And okay. that's where we're getting back to is discretion. Awesome. So I guess the way that Impervious kind of relates to the tech stack that you're building is kind of like how Lightning, the team at Lightning, and Lightning engineers, yes, Lightning. They're building the network. They're building open source code and contributing to it. Uh, but you're at ultimately kind of building a common for people to tap into. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's it's an integration layer. It's a way to tap in without all the a priori knowledge. Like building and Lightning is kind of tough. And like I love Liz and Desiree and, and, and Ryan and Alex Bosworth, and they're all friends of mine and, and, and our team. Um, and but it's we have like a very. Um, we have a complementary relationship where like they've done the heavy lift. Now let's scale it to its natural progression, right? Like this can be used for so much more. This could be the new internet. And that's why it's like, it's not just a pitch. Like the reality is uh, we can, uh, we, we can shift discretion back to individuals and you can choose which parties and intermediaries uh, use control and facilitate your data. And uh, yeah, so we're set up. I mean, again, it sounds really exciting. Uh, it's, it's awesome to kind of hear Bitcoin continue to progress, especially, you know, maybe not on, maybe it's not in the limelight per se, but I mean, that's kind of my favorite thing about Bitcoin is that it's <laughs> always the underdog. It's Even when it's underdog. number one on, you know, yeah, of all cryptocurrencies, it's still kind of always the underdog. And I'm, I'm excited to kind of see what happens next. Well, so yeah, and it's funny. Like even though like Jack Dorsey was here, like, I was on the couch and Tyler and Cameron like sat down. I'm like, what's up? <laughs> um, You're welcome. Yeah, what's up? And then Tim Draper, you know, it was like, wait, whoa, whoa, cool. Like, um, so even though we have heavy hitters and, and influential parties, but to like the macro economy, they're you know they're I don't want to say obscure, but they're oh they're they're those guys. Right, but to the Bitcoin world, they may be so prominent, but yeah, we're still the underdog because we're still we are just scratching the surface of, of uh, basically breaking power structures and redefining the infrastructure for both financial network and communication. Uh, if we take a step back for one second, and I'm losing my voice from talking for two days straight, is uh, you're talking about circumventing due process. 
And I think it's so important that people need to realize, thank you, that um, if if the other thing, only other thing people take away from this podcast is like, um, we should stop uh, using lawful conduct as a pretext for surveillance. Um, just like cut it out. Yeah. So I, I was backstage uh, talking to Alan Farrington and David Bailey yesterday, and there was a woman there. She joined the conversation. We we're talking about privacy, and she's like, "I don't have anything to hide." Um, sorry, guys. There's a little bit of ambient noise here, but uh, yeah. So you know, she was telling me, and you know, the rest of the folks that we we're talking to that she has nothing to hide. What is the problem? Like, and now, right. my only response to her was like, "Slippery slopes get slipped on." Right. And I mean, give me a break. And, and the reality is, like, um, you know, Experian, the, the Federal Reserve itself, Treasury, all hacked Office of Personal Management. Like, even the parties that have an invested interest in protecting its citizenry can't do it. Uh, and perhaps the solution as well with cryptography and the ability to scale uh, peer-to-peer communication, like we can relegate that role and make it far less prominent. And like ultimately, it gives us the ability, like I was saying, to let's stop using lawful conduct as a pretext for surveillance. It's nonsense, and it's just it's just a clever way of basically undermining and circumventing due process. Um, in the, and uh, whether you know it's. Uh, yeah, surveillance capitalism or the Bank Secrecy Act. Like, there are all these reasons to report and collect and survey. And let's get back to the fundamentals of privacy, personal property, and, and ultimately individual rights and liberty. Like, you know, the, the, the smallest, you know, the, the smallest minority is the individual, right? And, and individual thought. And we talk about diversity and inclusion a lot, which is like obviously critical to us as a society. But I think something we miss is what about diversity of thought? Uh, and to go back to the Federalist Papers, like even Madison, you know, Madison 10, right? Um, he says it's, it's imperative that until basically men are omnip- omnipotent, that we protect the ability to uh, disagree and, and have discourse. And like, I don't know whatever happened to like, I disagree with what you, uh, what you say, but like, I'll, I'll fight for your right to say it. Uh, but like, let's bring that back. And I think if we bring the technological mechanisms mm-hmm. to enable it, it can become a practical reality. If like, if the consumers knew and like, we can go to the consumer protection agency and be like, Hey, guess what? Every time there's a breach, want to know why I know it's grossly negligent because they didn't have to go this route. I understand. Okay. Okay. Um, I understand if, um, you know, they, 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 uh, they try to take the high road, they have limited resources or there's like limited infrastructure. But the reality is like, once it's known that, uh, things don't have to be unencrypted. They can be cryptographically secure. They can be surveillance resistant, and they can be non-snoopable, non-surveillable. Um, when there's when there's a leak, or when there's a hack, or when there's gross negligence, it's like you were grossly negligent because you're on notice that there are viable alternatives today to this complete fucking bullshit. And that's all it is. And until like parties realize, like unfortunately, monoliths tend not to move until they have to. And like and the reality is, like let it be known. This shit does not have to be uh, normalized. It doesn't have to be default or standard. And like, as we move forward, like, and I'll give some really cool examples. Like, parties will see, and I think that's how we win. It's like, well, what's the consumer thing? Oh, really? Are you such a trusted intermediary? <laughs> like, yeah, no. I mean, and consumer confidence in a lot of these organizations is at all time lows, right? So it's yeah. not. It's you know, people are starting to notice, even though it seems like they're still kind of in a lull. I'm glad that you have a technical and a legal kind of background because uh, yeah, I feel like it brings a, a nice kind of angle to this conversation. Absolutely. But there's a kind of a beautiful thing about Bitcoin as programmatically enforced That's right. property rights. Versus Absolutely. Like before that, it was there was trust in whatever government to actually fulfill what is on the piece of paper. And that trust has been breached as far as I'm concerned, at yep. least in the United States. So Bitcoin's kind of like that next level where it's like these rights that you have are enforced by code. That's right. And it's and it's it's always uh, you know, the, the validation's awesome where it does you know, it doesn't matter how much you kick and scream or the gossip or the price action, like Bitcoin doesn't care. It's literally running code and it's running distributed compute. And like ultimately, the power is there, whether you appreciate it or not. Like, it does not require a pat in the back. It's not a politician. Um, yeah. So let's get back to your. What was your question again? No, I was just commenting on the fact that you know 
Bitcoin is code and it enforces property rights, and that's that's the revolution to some degree. Like, there's a lot of like nuanced things that make the revolution, but it is. That it is it. it. Yeah, and you think back to like uh, bearer bonds or like the reality, like a bearer, you know, bearer instruments are simply like if you are in control, if you're in possession and control, uh, you can demonstrate ownership. And like it's like you know, I think that's one of the things that first things that attracted me to Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining was the reality of like you could go to any you know space and time. You can lose every you know like there's so many ways um, to hold a key. Um, you can partition it. You can encrypt it. You can hold it. Your mind is a perfectly fine place to hold information. You can remember twelve words, and if you don't want to use a hardware wallet, you can remember the string. Like. It's it's a perfectly elegant way, ultimately, to exchange private public key pairs, and like you can. This is where I, the, like impervious comes in with like the greater discussion on discretion, which is like you can rely on hardware wallets or software um, wallets or third party intermediaries to host our data, but it just should be at your discretion, and that's what Bitcoin does. It's not like the, like. The government doesn't have to fail. Uh, the values behind it don't have to fail. Apple, Google, or Facebook don't have to fail for Bitcoin to succeed. And so often we have this dichotomy, right, of like it's us versus them. And like it is from a value proposition, at least as far as the, the, the tyrannical component. But like um, there's nothing un-American. In fact, it, it's far more to provide discretion and autonomy to an individual. And if that's abused, like we are a system of laws of punishment, not of deterrence. And I know like since 9 11 and even before that, we always, what could have been done to prevent this? Well, the reality is, you know, lawful police work um, has existed, taking depositions, uh, 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 receiving uh, uh, testimony has existed long before um, any technology. So, like, you can't tell us that it's going to enable this like darkness. I was like, it provides discretion and control. You can have individuals held accountable, and the law is perfectly applied. You don't have to try to circumvent it with these niceties of like, well, but it's for everyone's good or safety or health. But like as we've seen, like, like I'll say it again, when it's for matters of greatest support, whether it's uh, war and peace, uh, public health and safety, um, governance or finance, it's when it's most critical. They could express dissent uh, and dissenting views and critique without fear of reprisal or consequence. And that was exactly what happened during COVID. Like, there were plenty of, like, insane people. And this is not, like, a soapbox uh, prophetizing insanity. It's just saying that, uh, ultimately, uh, dissent is imperative to a functioning democratic republic. And it's re- I think we got to warm up to, like, as we proceed as a digital infrastructure, digital for society, like... Uh, it's only going to get worse if, if we don't fix it. So. Yeah, no, I mean, it, there's, you know, I have a Can you slam the doors as hard as you can? It's not awesome. And you have to keep recording, man. Thanks. Feel free to jump in. It is what it is. Maybe together? Oh. It actually makes a difference. All right, guys, we took a little break here. Podcast editor, pay attention. All right, so Chase, uh, this has been a wide-ranging conversation. Again, I think what you just kind of brought up, again, at the time of most need is when things break down. Like, that's where Bitcoin comes in. That's because, absolutely where it comes in. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you can even see from those massive crashes we just experienced in the last month and a half that, like, Bitcoin stuff might kept buying rocks. Like, this China right. was falling apart. The U.S. was falling apart. Everyone was falling apart. Bitcoin keeps mining rocks. So, so like... It, Again, like I said, it's pretty incredible. So I'll give a little preview on something we're working on, yes. which is uh, it hasn't been announced, but it's we're very very psyched. Um, so as far as like you said, when it's most important, you need the ability to send and receive information and be able to broadcast. And so we're working to have a, a secure uh, civilian redundant communication system in Taiwan, so the civilian population can send and receive information without fear of reprisal or recourse. Um, and they can do so in a cryptographically secure way. So when when the when when the evil empire, when when the dark shadow known as the CCP approaches, because it's all information warfare first, uh, and it will be in parallel. But like this will be if if parties can stream what's actually happening from the front lines throughout Taiwan, they will undermine the narrative. Maybe not domestically within China, but internationally. Like because it was a success in Ukraine because. 
you know, they were they had the drop on the U.S. They had a pre or on the world they had pre form narrative, uh, and same thing with Hong Kong where or Ukraine, and, and so when this happens, like it's imperative that like Taiwan has the ability to send and receive information, express it, and it also I think is a non kinetic deterrent. Like Bitcoin is amazing in so many ways, and it, like it can also be the greatest form of peace, right? Like if if you can send and receive information, uh, and that can deter what would be enabled by an information warfare by China, or at least is is a is a uh, redundant form, um, they can't ever truly win. I mean, they might be able. You know, you can use force, and you can still have it in parallel this this bullshit campaign. But ultimately, like truth can win, and and, and freedom and liberty and, and sanity can prevail as long as they can send and receive. And that's one of the things we're working on in Pervious. Um, via the Impervious VPN, we're working with some really interesting partners. And I'm stoked in the few weeks or months, whenever we announce, like, there are parties we know that are here that are uh, involved, and we're, we're stoked. Before we get back to the episode, I want to tell you guys about Bitcoin Magazine. Bitcoin Magazine is the oldest publication covering Bitcoin, and we've been co- covering Bitcoin since 2012. Y'all, I'm so proud to be working for Bitcoin Magazine. We spend all day trying to scour the internet for the top news, the top plebs, the top subjects, conversations, everything that has to do with BTC, the asset, BTC, the culture, BTC, the revolution. We are here for it. We are here for BTC and BTC only. And we want to give back to the Bitcoin community. Hit us up if you want to contribute. And uh, yeah, go follow us on Twitter. Go uh, subscribe to this podcast. Go follow us on YouTube. All of the places that you can find Bitcoin Magazine, we are there. Instagram, Reddit, everywhere. We're there. We're there. Follow us for the best Bitcoin knowledge. Back to the episode. in front of uh, Texas advocacy legislation and got it passed by Governor Abbott. Um, and then Dustin Trammell, a lot of people don't realize Dustin was one of the very first people to ever not just use Bitcoin, but when Satoshi released the code and the white paper, he actually circulated it to a um, security uh, researcher uh, mail list. And there were a handful of parties that over the course of a year exchanged uh, intermittent uh, emails with Satoshi and they're published on like uh, you know the Satoshi Institute or Satoshi Nakamoto Nakamoto Institute. Nakamoto Institute yeah and you see so you can see Dustin like in his uh, first email with Satoshi say like hey and I'm going to paraphrase here so I'm taking liberties to uh, Dustin is um, this could have like a drastic effect on third parties and circumventing third parties and Satoshi like Satoshi him herself responded 
with like, yeah, it can be used as a spam filter, which, you know, Bellagi went and made literally that earn, earn, uh, or it was 21.com and then, uh, Earn.com was sold to Coinbase, and it was basically Bitcoin on the rails of of, uh, of email to, to filter for spam. And he also it can be used for micropayments. It can be used for redeeming credits. Like the scales there. So this is like very much in line with I think the initial vision. So yeah, we're, those were our lead uh, Trammel venture partners, Christopher and Dustin, and then strategic cyber ventures that are. Uh, cybersecurity, national security, focus fund, uh, Hank Thomas, uh, he significant participant there. And then 1031, love those guys, Freedom, Liberty, Focus, Grant. Grant's here. Yeah. He's awesome. <laughs> Grant and Jonathan. Um, and then Deflation VC, they have a connection to a company. I'm not sure I, I, I have a lot to like talk about, but you can look up Deflation.vc. And then uh, Mike Doniger, who was the uh, CEO of Strategic Cyber Ventures uh, SPAC. Uh, really, really interesting guy, former Wall Street private equity and hedge fund guy who's gone full red pill into Bitcoin. And he's just like, anything we can do to scale this. So, like, we have this incredible team with Trammel, with S- uh, Strategic Cyber Ventures, 1031, Deflation VC, and, and Mike. And, like, that was just like, we, we just like came out hot. And and uh, here we are talking about it. So, so I have a couple a couple more questions. Please. This is the tough one, right? And I want to hear about your business model, right? The sure, business man. model question is tough for people who are yeah. building open source technology and taking venture funding to do it. Sure. I'm kind of curious, you know, where are you kind of seeing Invictus AI eventually, you know, returning to those investors? Yeah. So I mean, we have a pretty clear model where the first thing we can do is when when we enable on the API layer anyone to build on Lightning. Um, so one of the first things we did was when we came and we wanted to get Lightning Labs' attention, like uh, we built a VPN that had been in Ryan Gentry's wish list for like years and years. It hit a blog post like five or six years ago, dynamic meter VPN built on Lightning. So we, we built uh, our VPN and we built some other tools. And we just started spinning out all these tools that are on a wish list. And they're like, what are you doing? You're hogging the gear. And we were just demonstrating that, look, once you have an API, it's just conventional development. So, like, whatever you want to build, you can build it, like, you don't have to use our API, but it's just, it simplifies, it's coming from the right direction. So, um, we're, uh, we, you know, we're benefactors of our own API, so we're building tools, like, our dynamic VPN is, uh, you know, that is an application which we are uh, selling and providing. It'll be free at first, but, like, there, like I said, we have other specific applications, we're in conversations, uh, let's just say DOD oriented for secure communication uh, behind enemy lines and denied access areas. Uh, you know, it's imperative that you can communicate with assets and resources anywhere in the world without re- recourse or reprisal. So we are going to build tools on our own API and we're going to harness that. And then there's all kinds of cool, you know, streaming micropayments things that we can help with. But like monetization comes next, but like we win if people build on Lightning and use our API and it becomes the default standard. Uh, yeah. So you can figure it out later. I kind of to some Yeah, I mean, but we've got products in the line, and um, it doesn't hurt to be the enabler. So, so I guess what ties the products together, right? Because building, you know, open source software, and then now we like let's just call out a company that provides VPN services and competing with other VPN sure. services. And who it's just it's just new new dude, it's, right? It, yeah, man, it's it's just new new internet. It's just a programmatic layer, right? So like, what? Uh, you know, the, the, what ties it all together, you know, our mission is building censorship resistant technology stacks and providing discretion and control back to individuals away from intermediaries, like kill the gatekeeper, screw them. They're terrible custodians for data. They're not to be trusted and they can be leveraged and extorted even if you want to trust them. So like the reality is like they are superfluous. Like I think that's like the way to think about it is like intermediaries are increasingly superfluous and unnecessary to uh, basically state-of-the-art communications and applications. Like, if you don't need them, you shouldn't rely on them, and we're going to enable that. So, like, whatever platforms and services, it can either be a component of their platform, or it can be from the ground up decentralized about intermediary streaming. Um, You can leverage this technology and just at your discretion. So discretion on how you want to use intermediaries, plug it in, build it um, into existing systems or from the ground up, and then that's our... Yeah, amazing. So amazing, amazing. Okay, well, I mean, Chase, uh, this is a great conversation. I wish there wasn't so much ambient noise. I feel like they're trying to sabotage us here, but never. Um, 
I'm, I'm confident that the mic is going to pick it up well, and uh, our podcast editor, Plug Music, is going to take <laughs> care of us. Uh, but for the listeners, where can they learn more about you? And I guess before you even plug yourself, like, what's your last word? I'll give you a moment to kind of give a last word to the Bitcoin Magazine audience. Yeah, I would say, you know, kill the intermediaries, um, uh, metaphor, uh, metaphorically. But, like, look, let's bring discretion radically back to the individual. There are, there's only two plausible realities I touched on earlier. One where intermediaries and gatekeepers like Google, Facebook, ISPs, and governments have uh, radically more control and discretion over our life and business, or one where they have less and like we're enabling less. And like, if you'd like to get on board with that, if that message resonates, if you're a Bitcoin or, or if like, gee, is like you're an enterprise or you think a company or service that you use should probably adopt better um, policies, like, like plug, uh, ask them to use the previous AI or ask them to like. A default to this new privacy censorship resistant standard because it's not hypothetical, it's not an abstraction, and everything else is basically gross negligence because you don't have to have these repositories of information ready for exploit. So, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a great last word. Where can people learn more? We think yeah, you can, you can check out impervious.ai, uh, impervious AI on Twitter. Uh, we've got a blog, and we're pretty active on Twitter. We've got some really cool partners, always plugging us, like Trammell Venture Partners and Strategic Cyber Ventures. Um, but yeah, we're, we're around. We're always, we drop into like Lightning Lab um, development uh, hours. And as we, so sign up on impervious.ai, request, request access for a beta. And then once we um, open general release uh, in the next few weeks, um, you'll be the first to know and, and you can start riffing away. So, All right. Well, fantastic. Chase, thanks again for coming on. I guess one last plug. Are you on Twitter? Yeah, oh, you? sure. Yeah. Chase the truth. There we go. Chase the truth. Chase Perkins on Twitter um, or Impervious AI. And um, yeah, our, our team... Uh, I guess that's the last word is that like, this is really only possible because like I have the smartest dudes in the world I work with and they're all mission driven. And that's why we'll succeed. And that's why when people, we were less telling, we're, we're less asking VCs and pitching them than telling them this is the future because Mark Stites, Colin Crossman, uh, Mark Clayton, and just, uh, Jason and me, like this is the reality we wanted. And we were building this for a few months before we ever told anyone. And like, regardless of like traction or metrics or capital, like, we're building it. So, like, stick with us. If this resonates, like, follow Mark Sites, follow Colin uh, Crossman. And and uh, we're on this mission together. Reach out. I'm, I'm pretty accessible. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to chat. So, thanks so much for having me, Christian. Awesome, Chase. Again, pleasure having you. This was a blast. Um, to all the listeners, make sure to follow Bitcoin Magazine at Bitcoin Magazine. If you weren't at Bitcoin 2021, you can get your Bitcoin 2022 ticket online right now. Get them before the early access tickets sell out. It's going to be bigger and better than this one, which is pretty insane to think about. And uh, follow me, SDK underscore Snarks. Peace. Peace.